Hello there and welcome to another live chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I shall be reading from Dragon's Heart by Carrie Austin Malone from the Myths and Legends and Indie Love Anthology. Chapter 1. Mary. Mary was tired and slightly tipsy from her birthday celebrations. Turning 21 was supposed to be celebrated, her friends told her, when she wanted to pass up a night on the town in favour of finishing packing up her life in London for her move back home to Wales. She had in, she'd had enough of London for now. It had been fun and busy, but she wanted to go home to the quiet. She was looking forward to moving into the cottage that had belonged to her family, just outside of the village of Trefgedward. It was where her aunt lived. Her aunt had been overseeing some upgrades to the cottage so that it had all the modern conveniences she could ever want, without losing the character of the building. It included a studio for her to work whenever the urge to be creative arose. She may even look for space for a gallery once she got settled to help promote other artists. She had left her friends and partying she had left her friends partying at their favourite nightclub, pretending to be tired as she just wanted to be alone. She was feeling a little overwhelmed with being the centre of attention. Mary kicked off her heels and stripped out of the little black party dress and sat in bone basque her flatmate Susie had insisted she wear, in case she pulled. Why would anyone wear such stupid underwear was beyond her. She wondered if her ribs were as brood as they felt, as she couldn't quite breathe properly. Even if the basque did hide her lumps and bumps, she wasn't sure the discomfort was worth it. Mary giggled to herself. One night stands as if. Why was it people seemed to think artists had a devil-may-care attitude when it came to sex and life? Mary sighed to herself as she fell onto the bed. She wasn't a one-night stand kind of girl. She didn't even kiss on a first date. The one time she'd been with a boy, she had thought she had really liked him when he first started art school. When it came down to it, though, there was no spark in the bedroom. She had more satisfaction of her B.O.B., a battery-operated boyfriend. Mary pulled the covers over herself and fell asleep. She knew she was dreaming, but it seemed so real, and she felt at peace. She was walking in the hills near her house in Wales, and she could hear a beating noise. She looked to the sky, and joy filled her soul, seeing dragons of all different colours flying overhead. They looked beautiful from the ground, flying carefully amongst the clouds. Mary had always loved dragons and dreamt of them, even as a young child. She waved to them as she carried on walking down the hill to her aunt's village in the valley. As she continued, a beautiful dragon the colour of a red ruby landed in front of her. She reached out, not being able to resist wanting to touch it, and stroked the side of its jaw. As it took a step back, the dragon shifted into the most gorgeous male specimen she had ever seen. She had seen several naked male models during her life classes, but they had nothing on this man. He gave off a presence of power in the way he strode in her direction, with steel grey eyes, espresso brown hair, and that was just long enough to run her fingers through and the tidy beard that she just wanted to rub herself against to see if it felt as soft as it looked. His tall, toned body wasn't overly muscular like a bodybuilder, but he had a washboard stomach that she wanted to run her fingers over. Mary stared at the man as he walked in her direction. Good morning, little one. Do you like what you see? Mary had looked up at him, smiling, willing herself not to stare at his naked body. Um, good morning. Are you not cold? He winked and moved past her to a nearby fallen tree and grabbed a pack hidden within the space in the rotted trunk. Removing clothes, he dressed slowly. Mary couldn't help herself. She had to look, trying to take in every detail of his body, wanting to draw him later, if she remembered this dream at all. This is your dream, little one. We can do whatever you want. What is your name? I'm Durant. It's Mary, she replied. Durant. Durant looked down at the little human and felt the mark on his chest itch. He had never shared a dream before. Could she be the one? If she was, he wouldn't be disappointed. She had curves in all the right places, and he had, she had hips he could hold on to, and a body that would bear up to being loved well and often. This may be her dream, and he should let her lead it and be comfortable with him, but he had waited a century for her to come into his life. If she was his mate, and if he could work a little magic as she slept and dreamed of him, he would. Dragons had been around for centuries, but not many knew that great dragon shifters existed. There had always been stories of them over the centuries, thanks to King Arthur. Durant's ancestors had always protected the monarchy. They were once knights and were sent to hunt dragons. The hunters had been cursed by a powerful witch who had fallen in love with a dragon who had been killed protecting her. The curse was a doozy. 
Hunters became the hunted. If it couldn't get any worse, the free-spirited witch just got plain mean in Geraint's opinion. If they did find their mate, their fate was in their hands. If their mate didn't accept them and their mutual bond, they would lose their dragon strength when in human form. They'd no longer be able to shift and would be forced to live a mortal human life, so they had to become imaginative when they had found their mates. Are you real or just in my head? Mary asked. How can I convince you I am real? Geraint looked down at her. Mary looked up at him for a moment. He could see questions in her eyes trying to decide if this was a dream. Would you kiss me? Geraint didn't need to be asked twice. He took her hand, pulled it towards his lips and placed a gentle kiss on the back of it. He looked over her seductively, wanting her to know the feeling was not one-sided. Her face flushed and he could sense the nervousness she was trying to hide in her chocolate brown eyes. Her dark golden brown hair was held back in a ponytail. It will be my pleasure. Lifting her into his arms, he carried her to the fallen tree and sat with her on his lap, not even trying to hide his erection. He held her tightly, wanting to feel her close to him, and he could smell the scent of vanilla. He felt her apprehension and stroked his hand down her back, trying to soothe her nerves as she leaned into him. Little one, look at me. As she raised her eyes to meet his, he placed his lips, gent lips gently on hers. Heat washed over her rosy cheeks and he felt her gasp. He pulled her closer and co closer and kissed her. It was surprisingly gentle but firm. His lips coaxed hers apart and deepened it, and she yielded to his control. Wrapping her ponytail into his fist, he pulled her head back, gently releasing her swollen lips so he could gain better access to her neck and throat. Trailing hot, biting kisses, his soft beard brushed her skin as she closed her eyes. He felt her shiver as the breeze hit her warm skin and heard her breath hitch. She fidgeted in his lap, his erection poking at her hip as she ran her fingers down his chest to the waistband of his jeans. Durant caught her hand. Hand, It's time for me to go, little one. You need to wake. I will see you again soon. Chapter 2. Mary Mary rolled over in bed, groaning with the headache from hell. She lay still, hoping the room would stop spinning, wishing she was still asleep, dreaming of her Durant. The alarm went off, and knowing she had to get up, she threw the covers aside. She made her way to the kitchen to start the coffee machine before heading to the bathroom to shower and get ready. As she stood under the steaming water and washed her hair, she thought back to her dream. She always knew she had a good imagination and she smiled to herself. That was one of the hottest dreams she'd had in a long time. She caught her reflection in the bathroom mirror and saw a mark on her shoulder. What the hell? Rising, rinsing from the fragrant soap from her body and turning off the shower, she grabbed a towel and rubbed away the condensation from the mirror to get a better look at herself. How the hell did she get a hickey and skin rash? She obviously needed coffee. She grabbed coffee from the machine and wandered into her bedroom. Fortunately, the mark would easily be covered by her shirt. She threw on her comfy clothes. The only place she would go and stay was her studio, and that she shared with Susie to work on the drawing of her mystery man, Durant. Durant. Durant and his teammate, Tristan, watched as the lorry was loaded with refugees and departed from the forest, where they were hidden with the other ones waiting for transportation. They had met up with the traffickers after leaving the camp in the night and walked towards the French-German border. The world was in turmoil with global warming and war. Humans and other dragon shifters who had remained in hiding that Dragon Command knew of were trying to find better lives around the world. Their queen, Agnes, had asked if Dragon Command and the Regius, Dracona, Regius Dracones, or the Royal Dragons as they were also known, could investigate and find a better way to relocate people needing help and looking for a better life. Their queen was, comp was a compassionate woman, not just a figurehead. She didn't always agree with other countries' opinions or even her own government sometimes, which was why she didn't know about the Royal Dragons. Queen Agnes had started the Royal Council so it would work with other sovereigns. It was also her way of spying and locating dragons that needed help. Only the reigning monarch and the head of the military knew the Royal Dragons existed and acted as the conscience of the country she ruled. Tristan looked to Durant as they watched refugees walking past their makeshift campsite hidden in the forest. What do you want to do? Shall we separate or go together? Let's stay together. We don't know what's happening to some of these people. The truck should day take a day to get from here to the coast and then should arrive in England the day after that. Also, it will mean we're not splitting the backup team if we need them. He messaged Dragon Command on the gaming app. Their tech team had come up with it on his phone that they used for communication to let them have an update. He and his team had infiltrated several refugee groups across Europe 
along with several trafficking organisations. They were taking money from them with the promise of a safer place to live where they would not be persecuted for their beliefs or background. His group's job was to find the different trafficking routes out of the camps, shut the routes down and replace them with safer avenues of travel. Refugees were dying or being taken prisoner and sold into slavery to pay off their transport debts. They had joined a group disguised as human refugees in one of the many European camps. They paid their transport fee to the traffickers and were going to be moved in the back of a truck carrying fruit. They were hidden in concealed compartments to be taken across the channel to England and from there they were supposed to be set free with fake documentation. All they could do now was wait and see where the assignment would take them. It could be days or weeks before they got a transport. Hopefully he would be home soon as there was a mate he needed to find. I hope you enjoyed this chapter reading and that you'll go check out the book. Thanks very much. Bye bye.